Have you no sense of decency, sir, at long last? Have you left no sense of decency? That's 1954, a young lawyer named Joseph Welch standing up to Joseph McCarthy in his anti-communist crusade. Our friend Richard Haas sees a parallel between that moment and a blistering column yesterday from retired four-star Navy Admiral William McRaven. McRaven, who commanded the mission that killed Osama bin Laden, directly challenged President Trump and his, quote, McCarthy-era tactics. In the words of McRaven, you have embarrassed us in the eyes of our children, humiliated us on the world stage, and worst of all, divided us as a nation. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Joe. It's Friday, August 17th. I'm Willie Geis. With us, we have NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, the host of KCDC on MSNBC, Casey Hunt. Almost not recognizing the lightning anymore. Have we, has it worn out its welcome? No. Never. I like it. It's time. Although I was, I do wish we could have Donnie in the He needs light. some. You need yeah. some you need sound effect, light. Donnie. I, I need some weather <laughs> effect. But first is the dark thunder. cloud that's over you your head normally. Or something. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a man really who needs no title or sound effect. That's the great Donnie Deutsch. We also have with us Republican communications strategist and an MSNBC political contributor, Rick Tyler. Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst, not pictured here, Susan Del Percio. <laughs> there now we have Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and the associate editor of the Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst, Eugene Robinson, political reporter for the Daily Beast, Betsy Woodruff, and former NATO Supreme Allied Commander, retired four-star Navy Admiral James Stavridis. He is Chief International Security and Diplomacy Analyst for NBC News and MSNBC and an operating executive at the Carlisle Group. Joe and Mika have the morning off. So let's get right into this and some new reporting from the Washington Post that President Trump feels emboldened by stripping ex-CIA Director John Brennan of his security clearance. Trump believes he's emerged looking strong and decisive in his escalating feud with Brennan, two aides are telling the Post, adding the president shows a visceral disdain for the former CIA director when he sees him on television. White House officials say Trump did not focus on his power to remove clearances until this summer. White House aides confirm that Trump made his decision weeks ago about Brennan, who serves as an NBC News contributor. Senior advisors, including Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, recommended to the president that they announce the action Wednesday amid the onslaught of news coverage about former aide Omarosa Manigault Newman's new book, which accuses President Trump of having made racist remarks, among other things. CIA Director Gina Haspel is remaining silent about the treatment of her predecessor, asked if Haspel approved of Trump stripping Brennan of his security clearance, and if she'd known about it or advised the president on the issue in advance. CIA spokesman Tim Barrett told the Daily Beast only, CIA does not comment on individual security clearances. but. Twelve former top intel officials, including CIA directors Webster, Tennant, Goss, Hayden, Panetta, and Petraeus, signed a letter that states this. We feel compelled to respond in the wake of the ill-considered and unprecedented remarks and actions by the White House regarding the removal of John Brennan's security clearances. It goes on, we all agree that the president's action regarding Brennan and the threats of similar action against other former officials has nothing to do with who should and who should not hold security clearances and everything to do with an attempt to stifle free speech. You don't have to agree with what Brennan says, the letter goes on, and again, not all of us do to agree with his right to say it, subject to his obligation to protect classified information. This comes after former Navy Admiral William McRaven, who oversaw the raid that killed Osama bin Laden, <clears throat> wrote a public letter challenging the president to revoke his security clearance. McRaven writes that Brennan is one of the finest public servants I've ever known. Few Americans have done more to protect this country than John. Therefore, I would consider it an honor if you would revoke my security clearance as well, so I can add my name to the list of men and women who have spoken up against your presidency. If you think for a moment that your McCarthy-era tactics will suppress the voices of criticism, you are sadly mistaken. The criticism will continue until you become the leader we prayed you would be. Again, that's from Admiral McRaven, directed at the President of the United States. So, Admiral Stavridis, let me go to you on this. Uh, you are intimately familiar with many of the men and women on that letter. Uh, what's your reaction this morning? Uh, I would focus on the letter. I think that is an extraordinary document, and to see all of those former directors of the CIA and deputy directors of the CIA going back 30 years is really quite striking. And there's kind of three quick pieces to hit on here. First is John Brennan. I know him extremely well. He is 
as straight as the gate. He is an absolute public servant and a, uh, a great thinker. Uh, number two is, why do people have these security clearances after they get out of office? It's so they can go back and consult and help government. And we see that example again and again. And many of the people on that list do exactly that. And people in office need that. I needed it when I was Supreme Allied Commander and was able to consult with my predecessors in that job. And then lastly, you just have to ask yourself, as a technique, the politics of this are just awful. Uh, if we're going to start stripping security clearances, what comes next? We're going to take away pensions. Mm -hmm. We're going to have special tax examinations for former officials that speak out. It's a it's frightening to see the division this is causing. That's what I really worry about is the polarization. This is another example of it, Willie. Admiral, what do you make of the argument coming out of the White House and, and some conservative circles as well, which is that security clearance after you leave is not a birthright. The president has the right to take this away. And this is a man in John Brennan who uh, is no longer the CIA director, no longer works in the government, and they say is working to undermine the sitting commander in chief. I think that's nonsense. And uh, again, the reason people hold these security clearances principally is so they can be helpful, they can advise, they can remain appraised of facts. We would give away generations of experience if people did not have the ability to look at the facts in a classified setting and provide advice <clears throat> to their successors. That is a good thing, and we should not let that go, Willie. You know, Gene Robinson, reading the reporting from your newspaper, The Washington Post, today about President Trump being emboldened as watching as this has played out. He feels better today than he did even yesterday mm -hmm. or the day before about how this looks, feels it makes him look strong, and is now considering mm -hmm. removing the security clearances of a number of other people whose name was on a list that the White House made public that was under review, including James Clapper, General Michael Hayden, and others. Uh, the president likes what he sees in this. Yeah, he, he, he thinks it looks uh, great to have an enemies list, uh, the way President Nixon had an enemies list, and to have it all be public, actually, and, and out there. Um, uh, it, it, this is, this is a, it just a blatant abuse of power. I mean, I don't know what else you can call it. And, uh, and, and really should be uh, a, a, one of the um, eventual articles of impeachment. I mean, this is, this, this is really pretty outrageous. He's, he's, he's punished, trying to punish individuals because they are critical of him. Um, uh, there's an element of calculation in what he's doing. There's also an element of, of sort of two-year-old's tantrum. Uh, that is, um, it's deeply disturbing. It, 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 it hurts the country more than uh, it, it hurts John Brennan, who will be fine. Uh, it's short-sighted. It's kind of everything that Donald Trump is. Hmm. One thing here that I, I think is important to point out, Willie, is that the president is actually not on an island by himself yeah. on this right now because there is a, quite a significant level of Republican support for what he did. And Rick Tyler, I'm curious your take on this because I mean the 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 antipathy toward John Brennan that is coming from Republicans across the hill and not just, you know, anti-Trump, never Trump Republicans. I mean, it's pretty deeply seated. The only Republican I heard yesterday, you know, acknowledge uh, that Brennan should keep his clearance with Susan Collins and even she said I don't really like what Brennan's done. Yeah, she qualified it. But there are three things I don't like about this. One, one is that uh, he, he decided to include Comey, for instance, who already had his security right. clearance revoked, which meant he just wanted to publicly stick it to Comey. There was no, there was, he, he didn't have a security Jim Comey, another person with no friends on Capitol yeah, Hill anymore. Correct, correct. <laughs> that aside. Two, it was pretty clear that he did this for, to quell the political damage that was coming from the uh, Omarosa uh, release of the tapes, and they wanted to. And look, that's not new. It's unwise, but it's not new. Um, but it sort of illustrates that he doesn't really play well with others, right? I mean, it, he, these are former administration uh, CIA directors with the intel. He's been in a war with intel, and it, it, it's illustrative of his character. What he likes to do is diminish others to build uh, hi, himself up. So, but I, I take issue with the one thing that, that kind of bothers me. This isn't about free speech. You don't need a security clearance to have free speech. 
you know, I don't have a security clearance, I have free speech. All of them that have their security clearance, if they have them all revoked, they will still have free speech. I don't think that's a really good central argument. Well, I actually think it is. It's basically why it was taken away. Basically because he's speaking his mind. But they mind. can still speak. Well, he can still speak his mind, but that was the punishment for that. You know, going back to Gene, it is so Nixonian, and we do have an enemies list here. And um, it's interesting. You take a look at John Brennan. I would love to have tracked the last... 30 years of John Brennan's life, what he did, what his day was like, what his public service was to this country, and contrast it with Donald Trump's last 30 years. I have to tell you, I have to applaud um, Admiral McRaven. That is what has got to start to happen in this country on every level. People speaking out in ways they haven't before, public servants speaking out, and once again, to me, the real villains in this are the Republicans. Are, you know, we, there is no level that Donald Trump cannot sink to. I think that at this point we'll be, be surprised. Mm. But Casey, you know, in your beat to tell me that there is not one Republican out there that does not have an issue with stripping the security clearance, with making our country one tenth of I'm one hundred. There is not one. There has been okay. some. Susan Collins qualified, and Bob Corker spoke out about it weeks ago, very forcefully. But for the most part, yesterday we saw people <laughs> saying, "Hey." You know, the president had the right to do that. You know, just as Jack Nicholson said, when they took him off the wall, you made this country a little less safe today. Now that we do not have the, the decades of experience to go to, who knows in a situation if, be, if Brennan being called on does not give a piece of information that now he will not be able to be brought in because of security clearance. Um, this country gets a little sadder every single day. I do think, too, Willie, it's so interesting that all of these, um, as, as the admiral was pointing out, all of these top officials standing up and saying, no, mm -hmm. this is not okay, because... The reality is one excuse Republicans have been using when they talk about why they're okay with something that President Trump is doing is that he has trusted national security officials around him. Jim Mattis, you know, is a name that gets thrown out a lot whenever you ask right. uh, Republicans as to, you know, what the what the national security implications of all of this is. Yeah, but and when, um, I was just going to say, give credit where it's due. Bob Corker did say yesterday that this is a banana republic move to strip the security clearance of the former CIA director. And let's not forget, Susan, that the president gave up the game in that interview Wednesday night with Wall Street Journal. When he yeah. said this really was what he called about the sham Russia investigation and Brennan's perceived connection to that. Right. And once again, the president puts himself above country and he shows that he is a feckless coward who no one will want to ever be in a foxhole with because he never has anyone's back. But what's more important, I'd like to ask the admiral about this is. These folks who have clearance, they also have individual relationships that go back decades with people around the world, with whether it's their knowledge on terrorism or other issues, cybersecurity. And can you maybe get into the, the how that really affects how the intel community does their job, not having access to those specific relationships that perhaps a new person may not have, like Pompeo, for example? You know, that's a really good point, and I was going to add to that and say, look at the optics of this outside the country. Bob Corker, head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, saying that this looks like a banana republic. And, and believe me, that comic gets picked up, translated into 200 different languages. They have to figure out the context of a banana republic. But it is going to reverberate again and again in that international arena. And you're right to point out that this will have a chilling effect on those national security uh, officials, formers, and how they are viewed, and all of it will reduce our national security. That's absolutely right. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.